plays on one man. Well, the best players are the ones that can play in tight areas, and he can certainly play in tight areas. He wriggles out of situations, he can find that penetrative pass, and he's such a good player when he gets the ball out of his feet and gets shots away. He could be the outstanding player today. Stay tuned, we'll have all the action for you live from London, here on EA TV. was a terrific venue to watch a football match. I'm talking about the Emirates Stadium here in North London. I'm Derek Ray at the microphone and joining me... Hello, welcome back to Armchair Armoury and we return to the Premier League Saturday night. Very, very late kickoff. We play Newcastle United at the Emirates. So, there's a bit of taste of revenge in this in this type, in this uh, fixture, to be honest. Um, obviously, we lost 1-0 at St. James's Park earlier on in the season. Um, due to dubious circumstances, an Anthony Gordon goal that could have been, you know, either the um, the the ball was out of play, or there was a foul on Gabriel by Joe Linton. Um, so I think it's very important that, that we win this game, not only just for the league in general, but I think we should. Yeah, we need we need to get some revenge here. I was talking to a Newcastle fan that I work with and he was saying how he thinks that, I mean, I, I think he's being a little bit modest, but he was saying how he thinks that, you know, Newcastle got no chance because of the amount of injuries that they've got. And I don't think that's, I don't think it's as easy to say something like that just because, um, yeah, like I still feel like Newcastle are dangerous threat, a dangerous threat, particularly attacking wise. So I think all in all, we've got to be very, very careful about taking Newcastle lightly, even though it's at home. You know, the last time we played them at home, it was nil-nil. So yeah, confidence is probably a little bit down. We've obviously come off the back of a one-nil loss to Porto in the first leg of the knockout stage of uh, the round of 16 of the Champions League. I didn't actually realize that Darren Fletcher on commentary on TNT Sports here in the UK said that it's the first time in a year that uh, that was the first time in a year that Arsenal had, had drawn uh, had a goalless draw and uh, and the last one was obviously Newcastle so where they literally stuck 11 men behind the ball um well 10 men behind the ball if you in if you don't include Nick Pope who was in goal that day but yeah it's going to be interesting to see what happens i it's one of those ones Newcastle are now becoming those the enter the kind of like spurs Man United category of like a team that is starting well they're, they're not doing as well as they did last season but they're starting to kind of come into that category also Villa as well of like teams that are in and around like the European spaces so I think um, it's going to be it's hard again it's another one that's hard for me to predict I think we can win it um but again, like they're very good on the counter attack, and I have a feeling that we don't really do well in transition. So, yeah, I'm not going to I'm not going to predict a score just because I don't know. I mean, I, I really don't know what's going to happen. It's what it kind of has vibes of the Liverpool game from a prediction perspective that I can't really predict what's going to happen. Um, yeah, it's it's crazy. But yeah, we have to bounce back as well. After losing to Porto on uh, Wednesday, we do need to bounce back, and we do need to um, get back to back back to winning uh, back to winning ways. You know, I know the league and the Champions League are separate, but we still need to try and keep up and not let this let the loss. Um, I'm just sharing the Premier League table. Yeah, not let the the loss uh, get the better of us against Porto. So let's have a look at Newcastle's form. So it's kind of, it's been kind of indifferent in the last five games. They've lost one, one, two, and drawn two. They lost to City, which is fair enough. Uh, beat Villa, beat 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 Villa, beat Villa, beat, beat, Villa. <laughs> beat Villa away. Um, they, they obviously the four four draw with Luton. They narrowly beat Nottingham Forest three two, and then their last game was a two two draw with Bournemouth. So their form has been very indifferent compared to last season. Um, you know, they're 
well. Seven points off of sixth. The Europa Conference League places, I believe that is. Um, or the second Europa League space, I'm not sure. But yeah, they're quite a way behind United at this moment in time. Despite the fact United have had a shit season, you know, they, they're actually sitting on 44 points, having won 14. So even though they've played shit for most of the season, they've actually like won quite a lot of their games. I mean, they've lost nine, which has kind of kept them quite the way out of the top four. Um, you know, again, between third and sixth, there's quite a quite a gap at this moment in time. Um, so yeah, it's quite interesting. But yeah, I mean, if if Newcastle did beat us, they go they go above Brighton, who I think yeah, play three o'clock on Saturday. So Brighton would have played by the time uh, they play us. And obviously, in terms of our position, Liverpool are playing Nottingham Forest away on Saturday, which I think they'll win, which would take them to 63. The 5.30 kickoff is Bournemouth Man City, which I think City will win, so they will go to 59. And if we win, we'll go to 58, which means that we will be a point behind... Uh, no, wait, hang on. Yeah. We will be a point behind City in third. Oh no, Liverpool don't play until the 2nd of March. Oh, okay. I didn't realise that. Oh, I got confused because I saw Nottingham Forest there and then Nottingham Forest against Villa. I was like, what? what's going on? So, yeah. So, yeah, it, won it won't really change Liverpool's position, but in terms of our position, if we beat Newcastle, yeah, we'll go into we'll we'll be fifty eight. So we've got to hope that Bournemouth do something against um do something against uh City, which I don't think they will. So I think if everything goes if if, if everything goes our way and the, the predictions I've made with Liverpool and City happen, it will the, the weekend will end the same way it looks right here. Uh which is a shame. Um but yeah, I'm not gonna predict because it's my channel and my rules, so I can do what I like. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to leave it there with that said. I'll be back again after the game on Saturday, so until then, take care and stay safe. And firing it to the near post. Now just the tackle that was needed. Long staff. Bruno Guimaraes. Good use of advantage by the referee. And possession lost, intercepted. Saka. Space and time for Arsenal. Well, the keeper reacted magnificently. Burn. Harvey Barnes. The cross is on. And that's easy peasy for the keeper. Gabriel Martinelli. And we have 30 minutes to go. Crossard. It's with Erdogan. Oh, beating his opponent with ease. Opportunity. In it goes! The goal for 1-0, and that changes the dynamic. Well, here it is again. He goes past his marker so easily with just a drop of the shoulder, and his movement's so clever. Once he gets onto it, there's only one thought in his head. Smash it as hard as possible. What a good goal. Well, the pressure has certainly been applied. Let's find out if Newcastle are feeling it. This could be interesting. Gordon. 
Went in strongly to win the ball. Martinelli. Can he take advantage? And fine goalkeeping. And just flicked off the defender. So a corner coming up. And there's the delivery. Well, a bit short with the clearance. And goes for goal! Well, it wasn't quite as dangerous as I thought it might be. Into the final 20 minutes. Fabian Scher. Oh, that's a fine pass. Harvey Barnes plays it back. Nicely blocked. Oh, just mistimed his run and the flag going up. Time for a change then. Substitution for Arsenal. Coming off the pitch, 29, Karim Havertz. Coming onto the pitch, number 14, Andy Nketiah. Martin Odegaard. Nketiah has it. Oh, big chance! Oh, a goal for Arsenal! It's theirs to lose now! Well, this is a very tidy finish, as you can see. He's under so much pressure, but his strength just allows him to hit through the ball cleanly. It's an excellent goal. Back underway with the lead standing at 2 0. Well, lovely work to get past his man. And options in the centre. Well, goal kick just as it was looking promising. Well, Martin Udegaard is so very talented and he's displaying all his talents out there on the pitch. Well, his skill level to go past defenders and get shots away has been excellent today. The only surprise, he's just got the one goal. They were playing fluent football, but then the foul, and now you would anticipate a yellow card. Well, he's had his name taken by the referee. Well, he knew he was going to get booked. It's a poor tackle, really. Substitution for Arsenal. Coming off the pitch, number eight, Martin Odegaard. Coming onto the pitch, number 20, Jorginho. Well, here it is again, and you have to say, this is a very good volley. His technique is absolutely perfect. Well, that's not a happy manager. He knows he's got a lot of work to do now. Well, if there were any lingering doubts about the outcome, surely they now have been removed. Fabian Scher. Well, advantage coming into play, and rightly so. Well, this game ebbing away, and Arsenal have been brilliant, Stuart. Well, the result has never really been in doubt, has it? They've created so many chances with some brilliant attacking play. I think they've looked an outstanding team today.
Real chance. And that is an attempt best forgotten. Yeah, he's got it all wrong. That's a poor effort, you have to say. Declan Rice. Now with Jorginho. Cedric. Trying to open up the defence. And still danger here. Well, they survived the attack. He has teammates around him. Anthony Gordon. Rewarded for that brilliant high press. And now it is official. The referee brings this match to an end and it's a victory for the Gunners. You're absolutely right, Derek. Their attacking play was excellent, full of energy and pace, and the midfield completely dominated the game. It was a great all-round performance. Well, he kept asking questions, Martin Odegaard. What did you make of what you saw from him? Well, it's a good performance. He worked hard, played well and scored a goal. And his team won. What more could you ask for?